Age of Empires II is about empire building, combat and conquest. You start from humble beginnings, a small village in the Dark Ages. You explore to expand your borders, conduct trade to boost your economy, and research technologies to grow your civilization in... We are without a leader. The dead king of Scotland has no heir. War creeps in from the south, where Edward Longshanks, the avaricious king of England, has returned from successful campaigns to conquer Wales and France. As Longshanks turns his attention to Scotland, the shadow of fear settles across the highlands. The English have thousands of Welsh longbowmen, hundreds of knights on horseback, and dozens of siege weapons. We Scottish have a rabble of untrained soldiers who do not even know how to march in a straight line. Well, we must act soon. If we have any chance of resistance, we need to forge an army by any means necessary. Terrorizing all of Scotland, and it's time for us to fight back. But if we're to defeat them, every one of us will need to learn how to march and fight. Follow the path to the blue flag. First, click the soldier. Good. Now, right click near the blue flag. To the next flag. Click the soldier, then right click near the flag. Excellent! To move to the next flag, you must walk through the black area. Moving into the black area reveals more of the map. The black area represents unexplored territory. That's all there is to it. Now go on to the next flag where you'll meet some allied soldiers. To move all your soldiers at once, click near the units and drag around them. Then right click to move. Try moving your soldiers to the next flag. Make it to the flag? The road ahead is guarded by an English outpost. Scroll up to the outpost building by moving the mouse to the very top of the screen. Then click the red outpost. the outpost to attack it. The outpost is destroyed! That should slow the English raids. Keep following the path to the village. Oh, 
home, sweet home. Wait. The English are angry that you destroyed their outpost. They're coming to attack your village. Don't panic. Just click your soldiers and right-click the English soldiers to attack. Defeat the enemy soldiers and you will have won your first battle. Good job. Now you know how to fight back against the English army. Scotland has soldiers now, if only a few. But if we are to turn back the greed of Edward Longshanks, we will need many more recruits. Much more gold in our coffers. These ancient stones and oaks around us will soon be steeped in the blood of clansmen. An army marches on its stomach, or so the old saying goes. My clansmen have been farming and tending sheep for hundreds of years, but gathering enough food to feed an army is a different matter entirely. Without a strong economy, the meager forces that we've cobbled together will collapse again. To support the Scottish army, you'll need to build up your stockpile of resources. To win, gather 50 food, 50 wood, and 50 gold. To gather food from the forage bush, pick a village. Then right-click a forage bush near the blue flag. In the status area at the bottom of the screen, you can see how much food the villager is carrying. The villager continues to gather from the forage bush until he's carrying 10 food. The villager will continue working for you, carrying the food to the town center. The amount of food you have is shown in the upper left corner of the screen. In addition to your food stockpile, you can see your current wood, gold, and stone stockpiles. The more villagers you have, the faster you can gather resources. Assign your new villagers to gather food. Villager, then right click a tree. Airlock, you haven't found any gold yet. Search in the unexplored territory. Good job! You don't have enough wood. Good! You found some gold! Beat fear. Beat fear. Beat fear. Beat fear. Beat fear.
You're well on your way to making a city. Excellent! You now have enough gold. Edward Longshanks, for all his disrepute, has shown military tactics in Wales, England, and France to be very effective. If not cruel and ruthless, he's indeed an enemy to be feared. The English sacked the town of Berwick upon Tweed. Would that I could call it a battle, but it was truly more of a massacre. Unless we organize our army, there will be more massacres to follow. I pray we can be ready for Long Shanks coming. In villages throughout the Highlands, there is grim talk of skirmishes between Scotland and England. We lost the city of Dunbar this week. Scottish defenders broke ranks and fled. The English have an army that is larger and better trained. To compete with them, we are going to need new recruits to pick up the spear, sword, or bow. We must remake these shepherds into soldiers. We will need many soldiers to defend our home. We'll start by creating villages. Click your town center. Then click the Create Villager button in the lower left corner of the screen. It takes time for a villager to appear. If your town center is selected, you can see the progress in the status area at the bottom of your screen. Good job! The villager has appeared next to your town center. Now, create another village. You need additional housing to support your population. To build a house, click the villager. Click the buildings button, click the build house button, then click where you want to build the house. If more than one villager builds a building, it will go up faster. Good job! Try building another house. Each house supports five units. The population indicator at the top of the screen shows your current supportable population. Other buildings are made just like houses. Try building a barracks. The barracks is a military. different buildings or units gives you different options in the lower left corner of the screen that's one militia create three more and you'll have enough soldiers to protect this area and win the scenario click the barracks and quickly click the create militia button three more times to make three soldiers in a row. Now that you have a 
few soldiers, you'll be able to defend this area against English attacks. Now that we have militias stationed across the border, the English have slowed their raids. But facing Longshank's army will be another matter. The wicked English king has yet to bring his famous longbows to bear. Our militias could only get us so far. We are going to need more advanced weapons. Rumors creep in from the south of a giant who leads the forces of Scotland, his great sword driving through earth and man and horse alike. If this mythical knight can hold the English advance, it will give us time to develop the arms we need. Even now, our smiths are forging swords and fletchers are making arrows and crossbow bolts. Earl of Forgera. English use very advanced weapons and armor. To win? You will need to advance to the feudal age and repel the English raids. You're going to need to research some technologies of your own to increase the strength of your civilization. For example, researching loom makes your villages hard to kill. To research loom, click the town center, then click the research loom button. Good. Researching technology costs resources, but improves your civilization. While you're researching, you can put your villagers to work and use your military units to explore. available when you advance to a new age. To advance from the Dark Age to the Feudal Age, you need 500 food. Now you have enough food to advance to the Feudal Age. However, you also need two buildings from your current age. You already have a barracks, so now have your villagers build a mill. The mill is a drop-off point for food, so build it next to your food source. to gather in food at forage bushes. Villagers can herd sheep or hunt deer for food. Now you can advance from the Dark Age to the Feudal Age. Click your town center, then click the Advance to Feudal Age button. Get on your way to the feudal age. Militia units in the barracks to replenish your forces. Kid, Salgra, Kid, Fiedega. Kid, 
Advancing to the next stage is the best way to improve civilization. Near the minimap at the lower right corner of the screen is the idle villager button. Click. Locate villagers who are not currently assigned to a task. Now that you're in the feudal age, you can upgrade your militia to men at arms. Click the barracks, then click upgrade to men at arms. Upgrading to man-at-arms will change all your militia units to the more powerful men at arms. are attacking again! Teach them a lesson with your new men-at-arms! stormed and sacked the city of Perth. It's worse, he's captured the fabled Stone of Scone and declared himself King of Scotland. If we cannot bring about a victory in battle soon, then the Scottish armies will be too demoralized to put up any fight at all. If this mythical Scottish giant does exist, I wish he'd get his forces up to Stirling, where we shall next do battle. for minor skirmishes is over. We now prepare for war! The time has come to take the offensive. The English have a fort near the town of Stirling. If we can defeat the English here, they may think twice about their invasion of Scotland. Scout cavalry are poor fighters, See great distance. You can use your scout cavalry to explore the rest of the map and find the English. To win, destroy the English tower to the west. Before we attack the English to the west, we need to build up our forces. Have your villagers start gathering food. You found some sheep? Sheep are a good source of food, so send them back to your town center and assign a villager to gather food from them. You can specify a location for new units to gather by selecting a gather point. For villagers, click the town center and click the set gather point button. Keep making villagers at your town center until you have ten. The more villagers you have, the faster your resources will come in. access to your town. It would be a good idea to build a watchtower on this hill once you advance to the feudal age. to build a mill near your forage bushes. You can 
by building fishing ships. To create fishing ships, have your villagers build a dock in the water to the south. this wall until you've got an army of about 12 soldiers. fish and automatically return them to the dock. Fishing ships are also useful for exploring. Build a barracks and five militia to defend your villagers and explore the map. Villagers can also build farms. Build four farms near your mill when your forage bushes are depleted. Each farm needs only one villager working on it. Villagers, you can use the town bell to garrison them in your town center. Click your town center, then click town bell. Good! You defeated the English assault. If you have villagers in your town center, Ring the town bell again to send them back to work. Hope. 
that you've reached a feudal age, concentrate on making some soldiers to fight the enemy. You will need at least twelve. Remember, you can upgrade your militia to men-at-arms at the barracks. You should always upgrade soldiers when you can afford them. on enemy units and help protect your town. Remember to upgrade your weapons and arms at the blacksmith. You do have a blacksmith, don't you? Large enough force to attack the English base. Charge! Keep your villagers working just in case you suffer casualties. I need to make more troops. Kid! Rob <laughs> Yeah.
the basic skills you need to play a random map game. The most common type of game in Age of Empires. <laughs> Sterling was our first great victory. Even as we held the coastline, word came in that the Stirling Bridge had been held by a force of Scots led by the mythical knight of whom so many have spoken. Now we know his name. Sir William Wallace, the Hammer of the English. Edward Longshanks names Wallace a traitor and a criminal. But Sir William replies that he cannot be a traitor since he never swore fealty to an English king. With Wallace leading our armies, the men fight with renewed vigor. Perhaps the tide of our misfortunes is about to turn. Our coffers were depleted at the Battle of Stirling, so we need to strengthen our economy once again before pushing south into lands held by the English. We need to construct the market and establish trade routes to the villages of friendly clans. Local legends speak of three sacred relics hidden south of Stirling. Acquiring these artifacts for Wallace's army will be a great boost to Scottish morale. The Scottish army has been rallied by recent victories against the English. The situation's starting to look up. Did you know that there are three different modes for the minimap in the lower right corner of the screen? Hmm? You can show only military units or only resources and trade units by clicking the buttons just below and to the right of the minimap. It will help the morale of our army to collect holy relics and place them in a monastery. One of the relics is close to your town. An ally has another relic. English have captured. You can retrieve a relic by clicking a monk and right-clicking the relic. Monks have other abilities as well. They can heal your injured soldiers or those of your allies. They can also attempt to convert enemy soldiers to join your army. Good! You have a relic. Protect the relic in the monastery by right-clicking the monastery. You now have one relic garrison. Relics garrisoned in your monastery will slowly add gold to your stockpile. Farms are a good source of food once you've exhausted forage bushes and animals. Farms are built like buildings and must be periodically rebuilt. To gather food from a farm, click a villager, then right-click a farm.
nice to have allies on the map. Your ally, the Yellow Flyer, can help you fight the enemy. You can also trade with your allies. To trade, you'll need to build a park. You've reached your allies' town. Go inside and see how his city's doing. Your ally's gate will open automatically for you. Welcome. If you've come for the relic, you can find it on the hill to the northeast of our town. Create trade cards to generate extra gold. You can also exchange one resource for another at the market for a small fee. Click the market, then click sell food for gold. Villagers and soldiers normally appear outside of the building that created them. You can have your units move to a spot once they're created by using gather points. To set a gather point for infantry, click your barracks, click set gather point, then click where on the map you want your infantry to gather. The English are attacking our town. Can you attribute any spare food or gold to us? Thanks for the resources. If you have any spare soldiers, come to our town and let's drive the English out. To tribute your ally, click the diplomacy button in the upper right corner of your screen. Give your ally some food and gold, but don't give him everything you own. the technology tree to see what technologies and upgrades you can research. Click the technology tree button in the upper right corner of the screen to see the tree for your civilization.
You now have two relics, Garrison. Bring back one more and you'll be victorious. enough soldiers now to think about attacking the English and recovering their relics. If you're getting ready to attack the English, I can help you out. Here, take this food and wood.
safely in Scottish churches, men murmur that we are blessed by the heavens. Our army now stands a chance as we prepare for the final clash with the English. Scotland now has archers and knights of our own with which to meet Longshanks. We march south to Falkirk, where we will rendezvous with the army of William Wallace and plan our combined attack upon the English castle. Only... Trevor. The English could attack at any time. You have some walls already, but you should it's complete here. them as soon as you have enough stone.
if you have surplus resources of one type, you can sell them for gold at your market. You can then use the gold to buy what you need. to defend your city. Units can garrison within a tower for defense and protection. Archers can even fire out of it. soldier will be less likely to attack an enemy that comes near him. Click a military unit, then note the combat stance buttons on the lower left corner of the screen. Using the advance button, you can also order a soldier to patrol an area between two points and guard or follow another unit. Congratulations. You're going to find lots of things to do in the Castle Age. For starters, try building a siege workshop to make battering rams and other siege weapons. Advanced buttons allow access to a new type of formation. For example, with a box formation, you can protect a weak unit such as a monk. Slow, but they're resistant to arrow fire and excellent at knocking down walls. You may need some rams to attack the English castle. You may need to assign extra villagers to gather stones so you'll have enough to build the castle and all the fortifications you'll need. Oh, 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 oh,
Horus has come. One of your most powerful units is created at the castle. Create ten more Wode Raiders. Wallace and his wolf raiders on your side, the English may be in trouble! Once you have a large army with plenty of siege weapons, destroy the English castle! Trebuchets are massive siege weapons with a great range, available only in the Imperial Age. Remember, the trebuchets must be packed to move and unpacked to fight.
Rob Wicker. at Falkirk. Yet, somehow, though outnumbered and outranged by English longbows, we were victorious! English castle was torn down, and a Scottish one will be built in its place. William Wallace has shown us the path to victory. Although he's but one man, he inspires great deeds in others, and many of the Scottish princes and lords have drawn their swords with his. Wallace's own sword is a five-and-a-half-foot beast, forged, of course, in Scotland. He has sworn not to rest until his sword finds the neck of Edward Longshanks. The struggle will continue. 
but we have learned the ways of war. Now, it is the English who will know fear. <laughs>